obviously brings a power arsenal. He's had shown success in both leagues at, at a really high level, obviously an all-star the last two years. Um, I think he complements what we do. Uh, I think he brings a lot to the table to help Nestor, Garrett, Seve, I mean, Frankie, really. I think they all have things that they do similarly and all have slightly different wrinkles that they kind of like talk and, and work amongst each other. So I think it's going to be a nice uh, blend of you know power stuff to, that he adds to the, the arsenal. When you dig in on that power stuff, a four-seam fastball up in the zone that gets swings and misses, this this breaking slider mm -hmm. that gets misses to both sides of the plate. As a pitching coach, what do you see and what excites you the most? Yeah, I think it's somewhat the simplicity of the arsenal is really nice is that like the game planning becomes more about execution and relying on your strengths. And I think that's something we talk a lot about with our guys. And I think he really embodies that. So he fits in well in that regard. And then I think it's, you know, him and Nestor aren't too dissimilar, maybe a little bit more power, a little more physicality out of Carlos. But I think just the, the ability to execute those two pitches at a high level gets our work to be really focused. And then it's just kind of finding the little wrinkles over time that whether it's the bigger shape breaking ball or the change up that you kind to add in and I think for me it's it's nice to hit the ground running knowing that he can have success with a simple plan and then we can go from there you know you always look with a pitcher at the physical side of things and what they can do how they throw their mechanics but what about the mental side yeah. of Rodone and the kind of intensity that he yeah. brings? I think that fits in well with just the the authenticity of what we would want out of the arsenal I think he his personality kind of falls right behind that and I think it fits well in the, the Yankee Stadium environment the big games that we want to play I think those guys feed off the intensity and the energy of the crowd and I think that's something that we can kind of work to channel in a, in a positive manner. He went from a pitcher who was non-tendered a couple of years ago and, and then re-signed but he now is a an owner of a $162 million free agent contract. What about the path that he mm -hmm. took and the work he put in mm -hmm. to get himself to this level? I think there's a lot to be said for having gone through a lot of adversity already, physically, mentally, uh, getting himself back to a high level, all-star caliber pitcher and knowing the work that it took. And so I think he understands that he's gotta be diligent about his process on a daily basis, stay on top of his delivery, stay on top of his arsenal. And I think it, it speaks to the, the character that he is and not willing to just give it in and say, that's it. Um, so I think, you know, having gone through the the mental challenges of going through a TJ you know rehab recovery plan and I think now getting back to being a dominant star is gonna be great you have signed a new contract congratulations that. so how much of that is an exhale for you now but I know even the time you're working yeah. so to speak without a contract yeah. you were still keeping in touch with all the guys and seeing what's moving forward yeah it felt like we had some good dialogue right at the end of the year about you know coming back and felt like we were, were trending in the right direction al along the way so just making sure we were doing our our, our due diligence on the players so that when we've you know got to the final point of signing the contract that we weren't picking up from a, a, a late starting spot so I think yeah nice exhale have some security back where we want to be you know we've got a good group of guys coming back obviously we've built a nice you know system here over the last three years and I think just getting to build on that further is gonna be great we've talked about the rotation but when you do look at your bullpen Holmes had the dynamic first mm -hmm. half did not have the same kind of second half. Loisica started slow, yeah. but then he finished like a comet. When you look at the end of your bullpen and those late inning guys, where do you see those two fitting in? Yeah, right there. I think obviously there's some interchangeability between those two in the eighth and ninth inning, adding Wandy into that mix, Tommy Canely, Mike King. So I think like we got to the end of the year, obviously the more stability you can have in those last few innings, the better. I think, you know, making sure we've got them all trending in the right direction at the right time is important. Um, but I think, you know, we kind of got lucky with Clay the first year coming in and going off right away and then Hicks gotten off to a great start last year. It was the first time we saw him scuff a little bit, so kind of learning how to work through that was important and then getting him back into a good spot at the end of the year. So I feel like we, we ended in a good spot with all those guys and hopefully we can get them back off and running to start the year. Matt, appreciate the time yeah, as always. Guys. It's good to see you. Yeah, appreciate it.